comparable to Tom. At one time, John was a young man, and growing up, he dreamed of being a superhero, flying through the air like Superman, preventing crime, or rescuing a damsel in distress. I'm guessing the latter part. <laughs> but it was just a dream until John heard the only difference between a dream and a goal is a deadline. Sometimes deadlines are imposed on us and make us respond like a superhero. Tonight, it's going to be easy for you to find out, and Tom, John's going to demonstrate this, how easy it is to be a superhero. Please help me welcome John, superheroes. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's, oh, it was a bird. <laughs> I guess we can all be Superman. Toastmaster Thorne, have you ever wanted to be a superhero? I'm trying. <laughs> Fellow Toastmasters, I know I have. I used to dream about it every day. Imagine if you were a superhero. Would you be able to fly? Would you have super strength? Would you have x-ray vision? Adam, I can tell you every article in that pocketbook. <laughs> <laughs> See yourself flying to the next crisis. Feel yourself moving mountains to stop a flood. Imagine being able to find lost children. You could save the world. How do you feel now that you've saved the world? Imagination is a pretty powerful thing, isn't it? Albert Einstein once said, imagination is more important than knowledge. <laughs> now, I'll grant you, Albert was a pretty smart guy. But was he right? All the imagination in the world won't make you a superhero. Would a little bit of knowledge do the trick? <clears throat> Superheroes have some characteristics that set them apart from normal people. One, they save lives, oftentimes more than one at a time. Two, they have arch enemies. Think about Batman and the Joker, Catwoman. Three, they often have a secret identity that makes them anonymous. Somehow, with millions of people living in Metropolis, nobody realizes that Clark Kent <laughs> is Superman. <laughs> Metropolis must not be known as the most observant people in the world. <laughs> Tonight, I'm going to tell you how to be a superhero. I'm going to point out who your arch enemies are. And I'm going to tell you how anonymous heroes are saving lives every day. When I'm done, you won't have to imagine anymore. You'll know exactly what to do. Jim and Mary Ellen were friends of mine in college. They were college sweethearts. They got married shortly after we graduated, had two children, and a very happy life. Until one day, Jim was working from a ladder <clears throat> on top of their deck. He collapsed, landed on the deck, couldn't get up. Lucky for Jim, Mary Ellen's a nurse. She rushed him to the hospital to find out that Jim had a tumor in his heart that had broken into pieces and some of the fragments were blocking his arteries. Jim had to have open heart surgery. 
call for help went out to me and my fraternity buddies, and we rushed to Jim's aid. You see, Jim needed blood. He needed O positive blood. Jim needed my blood. According to the American Red Cross, every two seconds in this country, someone needs a blood donation. In fact, 38,000 donations are needed every single day. One car accident victim could require up to 100 pints of blood. Now, where does all this blood come from? There's no factory. You can't manufacture blood. Blood comes from superheroes like me and you. Donating one pint of blood, if you do this, can save up to three lives. And what will it cost you to be a superhero? About one hour every other month. That's all it takes. But what about our arch enemies? What do we do about them? Our, our, our enemies are complacency and fear. The Red Cross says that the two most often cited reasons why people don't donate blood is, I never thought about it, and I'm afraid of needles. Well, superheroes, we can fight those arch enemies, can't we? Yeah. Yes. Hi, <clears throat> blush. Sorry. Need some blood? <laughs> now, Jim, when he got my blood, I knew he was getting mine. He knew I was, he was getting it from me. That wasn't anonymous. But I've been donating blood for almost 40 years now. And I have no idea who received any of the rest of my blood. I'm sure they appreciated it. And I felt pretty super about doing it. Jim is healthy now. He and Mary Ellen have raised their kids. They're looking down the road towards retirement. Without my blood, Jim wouldn't have made it. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's you. Wouldn't you like to be a superhero too? One hour to save me. Three lives. That's all it takes. The decision is yours. But you don't have to be Albert Einstein to see how smart a choice this is. <laughs>